a very nice time here. And today we're having like very good speakers on board. We have Charles and also Donatus that would uh, expose us to, I don't think Charles is, okay, yeah, Charles is here, I can say that. I can see both of them and I don't want to take much of their time, but I am also sure that comfort is back on her. So we can start, but basically feel free to ask any question through the chat box. We are happy to respond, and I'm sure that after the your conversations, also Charles, the Matthews, our MLT team members, we'll be able to answer all of your questions. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, in the interest of time, I think I'll just, you know, give it up to both of them. But I'm not sure if Comfort wants to say anything or Shimbi before we can start this session uh, by Charles and Donatus. Shim, are you there? Comfort, are you there? Ah, okay, I see. I can see. They're, okay, they're, they're active here, yeah, but they have an unstable network. I get it now. So, but yeah, so that's pretty much it. I think I'll just add to Donatus and Charles. And thank you so much, guys, for doing this. Uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, oh, Shim, did you just admit that you're seven or something? I think yes, so maybe some connection issue. I'm sure it's going to be back on. So just to be sure, we have Donatus and Charles here. Can you yes, guys... scanning. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, over to you. Yeah. Uh, over to you. Yeah. No, thank you so uh, so much so far. Uh, and hi everyone. My name is Chim the Chukukre. I'm also part of the policy safeguards team as the policy dialogue lead. And I'm glad that um, you all have joined this Saturday. As Kenny earlier stated, the, our goal for the policy side today is just to equip participants with um, necessary skills and, and knowledge needed to um, scale and do well during the hacking. So uh, today we'll have uh, Charles and Donatus who will be taking us on, on, on researching for policy writing and yeah, and welcome and hope this section will be one that you find insightful and helpful. Thank you, Kenny. Over to you. Yeah, thank you so much, Jim. Uh, Charles, can you hear us? Can you meet yourself just to be sure? Uh, Donatus also. Oh, great, Charles. Yeah, nice to see you. I, this, I think this is the first time I'm seeing you in person. We always switch up our video. But it's nice to, to, to see your face. Thank you so much for doing this. I am also looking forward to learn some policy strategy, researching data analytics, and everything. And I'm sure you are doing that to do a great job. So over to you guys. Yeah. Thank you very much. I, I don't know if you can hear me well. Can yeah, we can. Well? Okay, so we have a slide that we, I and Donatus have been working on. And um, I think the plan was for Team B to talk about uh, some of the things uh, that the policy shapers are doing, and then what the hackathon intends to achieve. And then before Donatsu goes in to give a brief description of what the policy brief is, and then I take it up from there. So I will, I will just share the slide now. If you know, yeah, I think we make a co-host, so I'll make you and Donatus yeah. and share the co-host, so that'll be better for all of you. Yeah. Okay, okay, great. Thank you so much. Um, I have the slide hidden somewhere here. Um, okay, uh, I don't know if you can see my screen. Yeah, I can see your screen, yeah. Okay, so I don't know, Tim, do, do you want to dive deep into talking about what the shippers is about and or should we just go straight into the topic of the day and then maybe you can highlight on what the hackathon is about i don't know Hi, i think it's i think it's unusual but i think uh, shindy may be having some network issue because it's always very responsive okay so uh, i think, I think you guys can dive in yeah, okay. we cannot hear Donatus actually. We can't hear Donatus. Donatus is you, muted. I, can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you now. That's fine. We can hear you now. All right. Okay. Very well, right? 
Donuts is yeah. over to you. It's over to you. Okay. Yeah, good evening, everybody. My name is Donatus. I'm a member of the Policy Shippers Organization. Um, I'm going to be taking you on, uh, should I call it an introduction to the topic of today, which is the policy brief. Oftentimes we hear the word or the concepts policy, public policy, policy agenda, policy formulation, policy implementation, you know, a lot of things that comes with the word policy. But sometimes we, we, we might not have the necessary understanding of the word policy. So I felt it is important that before going to conceptualize what a policy brief is, I'll do a brief or a cursory review of the concept of policy itself. And I, 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 I will start by saying that a policy is a decision, a decision by the government, by the management of a corporate organization, or by a state. It could be a plan, it could be a project, it could even be an agenda. But the most important thing is that it is a decision that, that sees to the actualization of a goal. Can you, can you hear me, please? Yes, we can hear you. Please go ahead. We can hear you. We can hear you. Yes, okay. So, so, so the, the, the policy is like a decision document that what that the government use or the management of any institution uses to push for certain goals and objectives. And uh, having said that, I would like us to go into what I call, or should I say what we call the policy cycle or the policy process. You know, um, as a student of policy analysis, there are some jargons that we try to maybe break down to our level, but they are important because even though, even though we have them as jargon in the field, there are, there, there are everyday aspects of policies that ordinary people should know. And one of them is agenda setting. When we talk about agenda setting with regards to policies, we are talking about are the defined issues that cause for concern, issues that are, that are imminent such that there is a need for an action. So, so when, when people set agenda, they are beginning to make moves, make moves to identify issues, look holes within the states, within the management system, within the scheme of things of an organization that might require the, 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 the formulation of a policy. So having, having, having I set the agenda for a policy, you move forward to what we call the policy formulation, where policies are made. Policies are formulated for what? For implementation. But before policies are implemented, there are certain policies that need legalization. We usually call it legal framework. These are, this, this is the state where, where policies go through probably the legislature if it's a state's it's a state-owned policy for certain enactments so that it becomes bounding when it has been passed. Having said that, there's something called institutionalization of policy. And that has to do with, the, the government has MDAs, ministry, departments, and agencies. And they are, they are part of the executive arm of the government. They have government implement agendas. So those organizations have to house this policy. That's why we call it institutionalization of policy. So when the policy has been gazetted, probably through the legal framework process, it has to be domiciled by the institutions that are going to see to its implementation. And after that, we move to the implementation of the policy proper. Then implementation gives room for monetary and evaluation. And of course, after monetary and evaluation, we now have the policy feedback. And the policy feedback is the stage at where policy makers receive probably thumbs up from populace or administrative uh, feed officers, or probably uh, a, a kind of a, a negative response or a negative feedback that will not aid maybe the review of that policy or its total justification. You know, you know, when a policy is found not to be useful, it can be killed or should I say it can be suspended. It is from the feedback level that we know all this. 
So I just wanted to give you a brief uh, background to policy before we go into the, the real matter of the day. And then again, it's important that you know that there's something called a policy problem. A policy problem is what requires a policy to be made. It's slightly related to agenda setting, policy problem. So now let's come to the topic of the day, which is what is a policy brief? A policy brief is a form of report that is designed to facilitate policy making. Policy making is a process that, that, that involves policy makers. So essentially, a policy brief should facilitate a policy maker in making policy for the people. Oh, no. What is that? Okay. How did it? Hello? Hello? Are you still with me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can hear you calling. I can hear you okay. calling. I'm trying okay. to <laughs> mute people that are muted that are crossing. Okay. 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 So basically, every policy brief is supposed to be yeah, a form of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just put the screen out. So every policy brief ought to be a recommendation. Probably from the academic, that, that's a, from, from, from the author, which could be an academic. It could be uh, an advocacy organization. It could be a think tank. It could be a, a public servant. So a policy brief ordinarily will be a form of recommendation from whoever is altering it to a policy maker that has the right to authorize it. Or a, or a leader, an executive person that now has the right to execute such a policy. So it's, it's, it's supposed to be a very brief document that highlights the issue at, at stake. What is the problem? Why is it urgent? What should be done? And in some, in some instances, having critique certain policy options, the author of a policy brief could even go as far as projecting the most effective option to him or her. We'll come to that when we begin to discuss the type of policy. So having said that, let's go to the, the, the other definition that we have before us. A policy brief is a concise document that summarizes an issue of concern and provides alternative policy options. Look at the, the, the wordings here. It summarizes an issue of concern. What, brings to, what that brings to mind is the fact that policy brief should not be verbose. The watchword for an author of policy brief is brevity. Because at the end of the day, what is important is that you are able to establish that there is a problem. You are able to establish that this problem is of, of an emergency. And you are able to give certain steps that could help remedy these problems. When you are able to manage this, should I call it a tripod approach to the issue of writing a policy brief. You have literally written a policy brief, of course. We are in the social sciences where there is no uh, clear or a, a, a fast and hard rules to how things are being done. So we are, we, are, we are basically giving you certain approach to which you could draft a policy brief. Someone else could come to me and tell you, okay, you could add this and this. But, but believe me, you, when your policy brief have captured the problem, when your policy brief have been able to, 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 to create an emergency, around our problem. And when your policy brief has succeeded in projecting certain recommendations that can meet this problem, you have been able to certify what a brief or what a policy brief should be. So let's go back to the last definition. It says, it is a focused document that depicts the urgency of a problem and presents findings using data, okay? Already from my, from my last explanation, you could, you could realize that when you are writing a policy brief, you should be certain of, okay, this issue is of an emergency. This issue is important. This issue is, is critical and there is need for action. So uh, the last definition shows that when writing your policy, there is need for data. You need, you need to, to get find this, you know, there, there is this approach. In the social side, we call it uh, empiricism. That's you, you dealing with evidence, ground reality. What is on ground? What can you see? What can the people feel? What can they observe just as you do? Because this is the basis upon which you cannot convince whoever is receiving that brief that truly this brief is what is what your his you saw a review. So please, the next slide. 
Then what is the purpose of a policy brief? The first purpose of a policy brief is convince a target audience of the emergency of the problem. And this, this, this is just like a, a, an advancement of some of the explanations I gave previously, that every policy brief must create an urgency situation around the document. That means the policy briefs will lack quality, will lack credence, will lack viability if ordinarily there is no sense of urgency around what you've presented. So that problem, yes, it is a problem. It has been established as a problem, but is there any form of urgency around it? Is there imminent danger to that problem? If it is not addressed, these are certain questions that must be properly answered so that the purpose of your drafted policy brief will not be negated. The second purpose is it's, it's used to escalate the needs to take action. You know, there are certain aspects of the of a policy brief, like uh, you know, you have a like uh, my my next uh, the next speaker will, will do justice to that. Let me not digress too much. So he will he will talk on uh, the, the the sections of a policy brief. So let me just stick to my own uh, aspect of it. So the a policy brief ordinarily is, helps you to escalate. There are certain sections of a brief where you make, you make a case of what you are doing, where you make a case for the argument you are presenting, where you make a case for the urgency of that problem that you've identified. And lastly, very important, it recommends viable policy options. Yes, you've convinced us that there's a problem. Yes, you've created the urgency around this problem. Perfect. But what do you think is the solution? What is the solution? Give us a solution. You could give one solution. You could give many solutions. It also depends on the type of policy brief that you, you are drafting. Some will require you to give many, leaving the decision of uh, what to follow to the policymaker or the executive. Some may require you to just, even if you give many, project one which you think is, is most viable. And that is that's for the purpose of a policy brief. Next slide, please. Um, Charles, this should be the last, all right. Charles. Okay, okay, yeah, this, this is the last. So now we, we are on the, the types of uh, policy brief. One, one of the types, they are basically two, the advocacy briefs and the objective briefs. When we say policy brief has an advocacy on that two, or an advocacy outlook. It means that that brief in itself is trying to push or engender a cause. If, 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 you, if you read, if you are able to read one of our, although we target a policy memo, yes. Yes, I think it was a policy memo. That, that we, the, the, the document we sent to the Home Office, I think it was a policy memo. If, if, if you read that document, you will understand that this is a recommendation. This is something that is arguing for a movement or for, for a stance. And it is targeted at a particular issue, which was what? Reforming the IS policy of the Home Office. That is, if, if we are to bring it down to our explanation here, it is an advocacy brief because it is targeted at advancing a particular policy choice. Look at the explanation. An advocacy brief advances argument in favor of a particular course of action. Thus, it goes further after exploring policy alternatives to include a policy preference. Therefore, advocacy briefs are deployed when the policy brief seeks to adopt one policy alternative. So when you are writing an advocacy policy brief, it is expected that you, 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 you do all the basic, you know, the basic requirements that you have to meet to say that you've, 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 uh, you've documented the policy brief, but then you are technical enough to make sure that through your recommendation, you pinpoint the most strategic option 
for the course of action or for implementation to whoever you are presenting the policy brief to. So an advocacy brief, though my re review a number of options, we always end with a particular choice of policy authority. There will always be a preference of what should be done next. Then we'll go to objective briefs. An objective brief gives a balanced and detailed information to support the policymaker in making a policy choice or in making a policy, which is a decision, largely speaking. Therefore, the objective brief explores and critiques policy alternatives, leaving the decision of a policy choice to the policymaker. I believe you can, you, you, you can see the, you cannot mirror the differences between briefs now. One tries to say, okay, Mr. President, do this, do this. But the other tries to say, Mr. President, there is a problem. There is a challenge. These are possible ways you can remedy this problem. It would be of good that you pick any one of these choices and implement. So advocacy brief will recommend a strategic action for implementation. But the objective brief will give a variety of options to the policymaker to choose from. And that is that for the types of policy. And that is the end of my presentation. And uh, I don't know, uh, I think, uh, yeah, that is that, right? Charles, that should be the end of my presentation, yeah. right? Thank, thank you very much. Uh, you guys, I appreciate your, your time. Thank you very much. Um, I think you you have done justice to this discussion. I should I should just be going. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so I'll be talking about the components of a policy brief. Uh, but before then, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Chow. Can you can you imagine that I was my, my video was um, I am a <clears throat> policy analyst at the Next Year Group. Um, it's important to say that uh, developing a policy brief or knowing how to develop a policy brief is very important in our world today. Uh, with the rise and the issues of uh, uh, participation and awareness of young people in governance and development, it's important for people who are in this field to gain that skill because as small as it can be, a policy brief can shape the direction of where a country is going. Um, and it is a very important tool because when you fire, it's like a bullet. When you fire it, you cannot retrieve it back. So I'll be talking about the components. Uh, one, the first component of a policy brief is the title. It's very important because it has to be catchy. It is what will determine if people will read your document. So if you look at uh, the popular publications, for example, by the Economist, Foreign Policy, and the rest, you see how the type I don't know if I'm the only one, but I think we lost Charles. <laughs> and I just I just made that she joke too. I think I think Charles should be back with us in a while, but pending his network may have gone off. But pending Charles Park, yeah. if anybody have questions for Donatus, I think you can ask now, pending Charles will get back on. That was a fantastic presentation and like, you know, breaking down the concept of policies and different definitions. I've been writing policies for a while, but there are some things I don't know that you said. That. Thank you so much for sharing yeah, with us. Uh, yeah. Thank you. If you have any question, please, you can ask, you can unmute yourself. If you also want to contribute to what Donatus said, before Charles comes up, please, 
feel free to do the same. I'm hoping that I'll just be able to join us in some few minutes or something. Okay, in the absence of no question, and I think Shim did also could not share uh, much about what we do as policy shapers. Maybe I will just do that. Uh, for those persons that just joined, my name is Kenny, and I'm also one of the team members of Policy Shapers. Uh, policy Shapers is basically an open source platform where we bring ideas and policies towards solving basic human problems that particularly affect Nigeria and Africa, and also the world at large. We started about two years ago, and it was an open call by Ebenezer Wikina, who is our founder. That's so we need to participate in a policy hackathon and we participated in an MIT COVID hackathon when we work extensively on how virtual education is so essential uh, for this century. And that was a good stuff. We had a lot of shout outs. We had 42 out of 50, that was about 84% and recommendations were given by the Stanford professors. So that was our first time we started policy making and ideas as a group. And after that success, we move on to work on this uh, Stanford Hackathon uh, exercise, and that's where we work on open data and transparency. And that was also a good one because we, we were the only team that got to the final from Africa and got third position. And it was a good start for us in policy making. And we launched our website. Our team members were working aggressively towards ensuring that we have a lot of open data sources and uh, where people can have access to all of the policies recommendations that we've written and. I'm happy to share the website link also in the chat box once I'm done and once Shaz is back. Uh, after that, we move on to work on some policy projects. And I think one thing that I gained traction is the reform IELTS campaign that we've been up to and great job to everybody. And, and, and Donatus is part of the team, Shaz, that work extensively towards that. We had a lot of backlash, but really believe in the vision that the fact that people are writing IELTS from an, an English speaking country is not fair. And not only is it not fair, it, it is expensive and it's quite ridiculous to see that once you pass the exam, it's expired you know, in two years. Like, I don't understand how your English proficiency levels decreases over time. You know, it's, it's one ridiculous thing we are, we, we are fighting against. And we just want justice to prove that we've made a lot of progress. You know, uh, we are still expecting feedback from the home office, but uh, we've been engaging them and all of you here, most you know, everyone, most persons have contributed to it. And that's what we, we, we've been doing. And now we are planning Niger policy hackathon. That we are in 2020 election is coming. The country is faced with a lot. We need to get an idea of perspective from different people. So this policy Saturdays is just like a mock-up towards the policy hackathon in August, where we are going to have a 48 an intensive 48 to 72 hours hackathon program where we hope to share ideas, knowledge, and it's our hope that these policies are to this way us to understand the basics. I think Charles is back and uh, Charles, can you hear us? I'm so, I'm so sorry. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. I can yeah, hear you. Yeah, I understand. Network could mess up sometimes. Yeah. Nice to have you back. Sorry, I just chose to explain some previous things you should have talked about. Nice yeah. to have you back. Over to you. Very interesting. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. So just to recap and move very quickly, so a title is like a topic, it should be catchy, it should be short, and then it should capture all that you intend to talk about in the policy brief. So the next one is the executive summary. Um, it's like a summary of all that is also in the document, because the document obviously may be longer than, say, five pages, you know. So it's you trying to capture the attention of your reader. So, for example, when I had a dry run with Donatus, I was trying to explain to him that, you know, when someone that is a health worker picks a document that is for maybe something on oil theft or governance or security, what captures the person is the three, four, five lines of the executive summary. And it, what it does is that it acquaints the person with what you want to discuss. So the person at that point to decide if they will go ahead to digest the full details of the document or jump or dump it. So an executive summary summarizes the key points of the document. And then now the contest, which is the th third item on the list, the contest is you now setting like an agenda setting. It's like you saying, okay, these are the real issues is you bringing out, you can also develop like three or four subtitles where you discuss some of the key issues. 
one of them can be another a background, but others could also be individual topics about issues pertaining to the subject matter that you want to discuss. Therein, you can bring out that way you cannot bring out your data to give facts, statistics, reports to back up your argument. And then um, at, the, at that stage, you also try to highlight very key issues. So after the context, you now go to the critic of the policy option. So this part is very important because you're coming on with your own ideas, you're coming on with your own recommendations and solutions. So it's important at this point to say, look, what you have run is not working. So you critique the available policy options. You try to bring out using data, it has to be data driven, to say, look, um, the government or whoever is in position should look, see that this thing is not working. From the period this to this, from 2015 to 2019, this has been the record. And Nigerians, for example, are not better off. So this point is also very important. It can overlook can overlap with the context, they can both work together. And then the important part, which is the policy recommendation, the policy recommendation is where you now come up with your own actionable solutions. So they have to be easy to understand, they have to be clear, they have to show that you have depth. And why policy recommendation is important is very risky because you may go and recommend something that has already been implemented or something that is uh, it has been recommended before. So it's, it's very important for one to read widely so that when you're recommending, you can even rework the existing recommendations or rework what is, I call this remix in our diary, you can remix what is existing and say, look, yes, police reforms, for example, is important, but this is an aspect of it. It did not add, it did not involve community stakeholders in the discussion. This is an example. So this is very important for policy recommendation. Then you go ahead to add appendices, your, you know, show proof of some of the talks you have had uh, with supporting documents. You add them, it's like an addendum, a postscript. You know, you add them beside your document to show that, yes, uh, this is a proof of some of the things we are talking about. And then references, it could be hyperlinks, you can hyperlink, you can footnote, you can end note. Uh, but I prefer to footnote in my own uh, policy uh, brief uh, development because it kind of shows you the full disclosure. Like I have noticed, uh, like this is me sharing my own experience on some ground. When you PDF uh, some documents that are hyperlinked, some people struggle to click the hyperlink. They may be using another version of a PDF or a PDF reader that will not respond quickly. But when you footnote, it's all out there. They, they can see who wrote it, they can see the link, they can see all the information that can just copy and paste and look for what they want. So that is that for the components of the policy brief. Uh, I'll go straight to talk about the, I call it tips for writing a winning policy brief. So I, I try to capture some of the tips I have used in the past. Um, a policy brief is, is, can be very short. It can be four or five pages. It can be eight pages. I think it shouldn't be more than 10 pages because when it's, you have 10 pages, then you're writing a, a, a report, a different thing altogether. But um, one difficult aspect of the policy brief is when they give you a 100-page document and tell you to bring it down to five pages. You should capture all that in a 100 page document and turn it to a policy brief. Or you write a concept note, a proposal, and they tell you, or I create a policy brief out of the concept note and then the, the discussions on it. So those are also very, um, I, I won't call them difficult, but they require you to pay uh, great attention. So these are some of the tips. Uh, research the topic and read widely. It is very, very important. My strategy has been to if you give me a topic to work on, I'll go and devote at least two hours to reading it. And um, a strategy, another strategy I use is to go watch some videos on YouTube. If there are scholars who have, or professionals who have discussed that topic, I go on YouTube to watch some videos to know, to get the latest thinking on those areas. And then uh, sometimes I just try to play around. You may, I have a Chrome, 
the Chrome software for browse my browsing. I have the Edge. So I click what I click. If I I put something in Chrome, I put it in Edge. I see different results. I go to Google Scholar. I just try to play around the information to see to dig up what may be missing. So it's important for anyone developing a policy brief to read widely. You have to be the most knowledgeable person in that topic as at when you are writing the policy brief because if a policymaker stumbles on it and says, oh, I need to speak to this person, I think I like A, B, and C, and you're in a room with a policymaker, you should be able to defend, um, describe beyond every reasonable doubt that this is the top, top notch, this is the top notch policy document that it can be used, that is bulletproof and it can be used anywhere. And then, like I, I said, they choose a catchy topic. I've spoken about how a topic is very important. Use data to present facts. Um, there's this, uh, uh, what's it called, theme I like. It said, in God we trust, every other person should bring data. So I wanted to show some of my data tricks. Uh, I mean, it's not, it's not machine learning or anything, but I just know how to play around data a little uh, because I use them for my work. So I wanted to show, but I think the in the, in the coming weeks when we we'll have other policy strategies, we we'll have strong strong professionals who who show us what data can do. But data is very important. I mean, you can summarize the 500, uh, 500 words using uh, simple charts, and it is very clear and it's very understandable. So I believe in data also. And uh, like you say, data is the new oil. Any any strong anybody that is interested in policy, anybody that wants to be up here in the policy space, you have to pay keen attention to data and uh, using data, data driven information and evidence to push forward your discussion or your argument. And then know your audience. Um, cannot be in the wash sector and be writing about uh, I don't know maybe G SGBV. I mean. Most of these issues are cross-cutting. Uh, you cannot talk about one without delving into the other a little, you know, trying to, to make your point very clear, but try and know, it's important to know your audience and then try to make it as easy. Don't use, don't use too much of jargon words. Uh, it's important to use very easy to understand words, make it plain, use short sentences to describe what you're trying to say so that if someone in China, like we always say at next year, if someone in China that knows this, the basic of English picks up your document, the person can understand what you're saying. For example, you cannot write a document and say the, the location where it happened is in Niger. And maybe you're meaning to talk about Niger state in Nigeria. You must say that it happened in my so -so -so community in Niger state, Nigeria, because if you say Niger, it could be Niger. So it means you have misled the person and it, maybe the person starts seeing Nigeria later on in the document, the person is, is lost. So it is key to know your audience, pay attention to spellings, punctuation. I mean, there are a lot of tools, Grammarly, there's checks. Uh, you even have the inherent tool in Word document. You can use your spell check to correct those little devils. You know, I call them devils because you can do a very beautiful work and then one wrong spelling of punctuation will rubbish. I mean, it, it, where I work, once uh, my superiors are reading your document and they stumble on one wrong spelling, they are not interested in the document anymore. It means every other thing you're working with may be wrong. So it's important because people do not have uh, the patience to read and read and read, you know. So it's important to check those things. Then avoid bogus statements. You don't make statements as, as though you're the one that created them out, or you know you're, you can beat your you can't beat your chest. What you can do is to make statements from data, from facts, from your research, and then you reference very well to show that this is where I got this information from. It is not you that I say it. You're just putting a whole lot together to so that we arrive at a good solution. So don't make statements that make it look like they are conclusive. When you say the the that the, the, the lot of Nigerians, 10 Nigerians die every day because of HIV AIDS. And you say it like that and you do your full stop. It's bogus. If they are called to come and defend it, that's a problem. So you have to, if you say that happened, you say, oh, it's actually United Nations so that said it. It's not me. It's FAO. 
you know, because I've been in an organization, I went to Berlin in a conference to talk, and they were like, no, this all these things you're saying, we are. I said, oh, see where I found it, you know, go and read it there. The full detail is there. The people who were on ground to do the research did it. Qualitative, quantitative, they did it. So, and um, the artists have spoken about it previously. Brevity is key, and uh, make it very, very uh, uh, easy to understand science. You cannot uh, emphasize the importance of making it easy for everybody to understand. Uh, consult professionals to help you review your work. Um, yesterday, I was some, about to submit a bit. I called my colleagues and said, because we have a review process. Whenever you develop a, a document, you, and you share it with your colleagues before you send it to your boss, your superior, and then before it goes up again, just like that, they review your document, several stages. So I thought I had done a wonderful work. And when I called my colleagues, come and sit down. In one, we had done everything and it was looking smooth. It was the last page. The last page took us one hour to rework and be on the same page before all of us could be on the one hour we were deliberating, this shouldn't be here, this is a pronoun, if you put a pronoun and a verb, all those, you know, English talk, that's how we did it though, for one hour before we arrive at a conclusion. So be ready to consult experts, they don't think that, yes, that you're, you're there, yes, whenever you do something, there's always room for, for improvement. And when, when you're open to review, people will always look out for you. So it's very difficult to collect criticism for, for a work that you know you have spent a lot of time doing and you think you have done your best. Yes, it's very difficult. But if you master the art of being patient, listening, and agreeing or compromising or trying to accept other people's views, you become very good at writing policy briefs. I, I, correction, criticism, there are the most difficult things in this, in this field, but this field is also um, very delicate. One bullet, like I said, you fire, can finish everything. People will not give you a second chance to know why you didn't get it right. You can write a, a letter and say, I'm sorry for saying this and that, but on the long run, if you have 10 people that looked, looked out for you and who felt you, you know the job, they will reduce to five. And in this field, uh, your your friendship with somebody, or how close you you are with somebody, doesn't matter. For most time, people want you to deliver. You're not a politician. They want you to deliver. And if you see politicians, very smart people, you think they don't know what they are doing. When they want to hire these days, they hire top-notch technocrats and surround themselves put those guys close to them so that they will do the main work. When it comes to the main work, that needs rigor then now put uh, their fellow politicians around. That's the trend now. And that is why this field is interesting because time will come when professionals, technocrats like us to dominate the field. It will be all about what you have to offer. It's no longer, uh, I did it before. What can you offer? Uh, so I, I now ended it with No Rules Rules. Um, it's one book by this Netflix guy. I can't remember his name. Um, in as much as you're trying to put all these rules in your basket to help you develop a very beautiful document, it is uh, important to also try, try not to um, respect rules. Why I'm saying this is because when you respect rules so much, you tend not to be very creative. And how do you how do you grow the society if there's no if you don't innovate? So even as even though you respect some of the laid down rules in developing a policy brief. Try to think, you think of you know new and innovative ways that you can spice your document, make it outstanding. You can, it could be your own trademark. People can start buying into it, and before you know what was happening, to become a norm. A good example is you know this uh, recommendation. If you notice some recommendations, they have the recommendations, but they will go up before the introduction in the policy brief to write key takeaways or key findings or something like that. And in that key finding, they'll just bullet point some of the things. Because if it, a policy doc, a policy maker picks your document, they're going straight, if they see the key points and they like what they are seeing, they now dive in or they now call you to, for discussion. So it changes over time. So be open to change and, um, and uh, be innovative. I think that would be all from my end. Thank you so much. Thank you. Over to you, Ken uh, Yeah, thank you so much, Charles. Like, 
I don't know. It's I wish I had these teachings when I wrote my first policies, but thanks to Epidisa, it taught me a lot, but this is very much detailed. Thank you so much, Charles. Thank you, Thomas Donatus. Like you've said a lot of stuff regarding like, you know, citations, how you want to make claims, you know, and I think one thing we are still going to talk about is more about primary data and secondary data. When do we use primary data and secondary data and how to give all of that? Because you may think you have just 48 hours, but you can actually get primary data. We did that for all of the policies we wrote in an hackathon. It's definitely hard. The, the data size may be limited, but these are things that are possible so to have your claims. But this, I think they've said a lot of things and I'm opening up for questions. If there's anyone with any question, you can omit yourself to ask, or you can actually uh, just type in, in the chat and we'll use the last five minutes to answer any question. Anyone? Okay, yeah, in the absence of no questions, this is a great session. Okay, Oni, yeah, great. Oni, you can unmute yourself. Uh, thank you very much, Kendi. Um, thank you, Charles and Donatus. Well, for me, it's not really a question, just to also um, contribute, especially to the bogus part. I, I can really relate to that. I'm also just learning the ropes, but I recall that I was in one session like that where we're talking about transformational leadership and the role of youth. And, you know, someone made a statement referencing the NSAS issue. And you know, the statement she made was, oh, when the youth were trying to, to make a change, were trying to get involved, they killed all of them. And <laughs> it struck me because I know there are a lot of controversies around NSAS and all, but I felt, number one, that was an international audience. And you making a statement to say they killed all the youth, I think it was bogus, but the policy gurus here, you can correct me, Just these were just my thoughts. I felt it wasn't right to say that, yeah, there was a lot of emotion you know, regarding the NSAS movement and all, but saying they killed all the youth, I didn't quite agree with it, but I don't know, I may be wrong, just my thoughts. Yeah, I, I, I'm sorry to, I, I kind of know how that thing works, you know, because sometimes uh, your emotion will just take over and you want to say it how it is or how you feel it is. So the best thing she would have said was, according to reports, they, a lot of people were killed or they killed all of us, according to reports. The argument will not be, which reports? Uh, you now got to look at the reports. Do you understand? So that's what she would have said, that according to reports she saw, you know right. coming out come and say they kill people oh, yeah. how did you know they kill people come and sit down and write, write <laughs> all right yeah. thanks yeah thank you so much uh on you for, for that insightful comment i also agree with you really but thanks for contributing that is there any other additional comments um questions contributions from anyone Okay, in the absence of no, I want to say a big thank you to Charles and to Donatus. Like, you know, I think one striking thing for me is the fact that they spoke with passion, you know, <laughs> like they are not just saying, let me just come and do this and go. Like you see that they are passionate about it and they also believe in this project. And I cannot just wait to see how much more they will contribute to all of this process. It is nice to have you all on board. We are happy to do this again and just mark your calendar also for next week, same time. And also share the registration link to your colleagues, your friends. It's not even about the prize or the money that the winners are going to get, it's about the learning process of policies, about like the fact that we are making an impact in the Nigerian landscape and we are having data online and analysis where people can use to study questions that are affecting human lives. And there's no other thing I would rather be proud of doing than something like this. It's nice to have you again and from everybody at Policy Shapers, we say thank you and we are looking forward to hear more from you next week. Have a wonderful rest of your evening. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.